guys, it's Watson. Welcome to another video. I don't know what the fuck is going on with my hair right now. It's pink, it's blue, it's blonde, it's like... I feel like Rainbow Dash right now. I'm fucked up bleaching it, but don't worry, it will be this color by nightfall. Although if you're here, uh, click on the video, I'm pretty sure you're not here to hear about my hair. You're here to hear, here to hear, you're here to hear about what I have to say about Tana Mojo and the drama and all this shit. And I'm basically just jumping on the bandwagon. I just feel like there's a bunch of shit that she hasn't addressed that she needs to. Because the thing with Tana is that she made an apology video and while I, <laughs> I think me and a lot of people appreciate the fact that she did take a time to like make a video and try to apologize for the n drama. We kind of assumed that it, she was going to be apologizing about all the drama, not necessarily just the N-word drama, you know what I mean? Everything that's happened and everything that she's just been, like, recently called out for. And while I understand that it could be scary for her to post something like that, where she just comes clean about everything, I think that's what a lot of the people expected and they wanted, but we're not getting it. We're, we're just getting the N-word drama. I think that's mainly to, like, clear her name, to be completely honest, but, you know, I, I, I don't know, I can't be inside her head. But one of the tweets that she sent out, she said it's just gonna be about the n-word drama, but she'll like address anything that anybody else thinks she needs to address. And with that, a bunch of people replied, and they're basically like, hey, yeah, address like these things. And they're like 20 billion fucking things that everybody wanted to be addressed, of course, but she didn't address them. And so we're just kind of like waiting here to hear shit about like what happened and like what's gonna happen with all the shit that's still kind of like floating in the air, you know what I mean? And so she's not responding to any of the tweets, obviously. Because I think, again, she's scared to, like, kind of admit that she's been lying about a lot of things. And so I'm making this video to basically say what she needs to address. I know she's not gonna see it because I have, like, 20 subscribers, but, um, I'm just making it just in case she actually does. And so if you do watch this video, I'd appreciate it if you kind of, like, sent it to her or, like, like, just trying to get it up. If not, just, like, make sure she sees it. So maybe it'll cause her to address these things, which, again, I doubt it's gonna happen, but I really hope it does because I feel like it'd be the right thing for her to just kind of come clean with everything now and I feel like people would be less mad there'd still be like haters that are mad but people would be more happy with the fact that she came clean about everything and she's not like cherry picking as to what she's talking about if that makes any sense so I have a list of things that I really feel like she needs to address because they've been hanging in the air and we haven't really gotten an answer out of them the first thing is the FBI drama which I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know about basically Tana made a bunch of snaps that said that the FBI called her and um, said that people hacked into her email and sent a bombing and shooting threat to an airport, which again, you <laughs> that's a lie. That's no wonder she deleted it off her Snapchat within like five minutes. I'm gonna like find the clips and try and post them here. I was filming my apology and explanation video, which I'm still trying to get to go up tomorrow at noon, but I just got off the phone with the FBI who called me and basically said that someone hacked into Hacked into my email and then sent a bombing and shooting threat from my email to McCarran Airport. And so I'm out of town right now, but apparently the FBI just showed up to my parents' house, my current house, and my old house and trying to find me for this. And I just talked to them and explained what happened. Obviously, I'm not blaming iDubs for what like his supporters do, but um, I am having to talk to the FBI and pause filming. So, yeah. And I'm supposed to fly home tomorrow, but I'm not sure if I can. Now I might have to avoid the airport. So I will keep you guys updated on this situation and when my apology video goes live. But yeah, she definitely deleted these for a very good reason because people instantly kind of like caught up on the bullshit. But unfortunately, people like saved the snaps obviously before she deleted them. And we were kind of able to catch on. That's absolute bullshit because the FBI does not call private citizens. That is not a thing that happened. Um, and I, I really, just from what's happened, I doubt it's fucking happened. It just, I smell bullshit. And a lot of other people smell bullshit, and a lot of other people have proof that this is fake. The FBI just doesn't do that. The FBI would just, even if they did, they would not just, like, talk to you and, like, ask you if you did it, or, like, talk to you about it, or interrogate you. And then, like, you'd say, nope, no, I didn't. And they'd be like, okay, it's fine. They'd investigate. They'd shut down the airport or something. They would put it on the news. You know, it's, nothing covered it. It didn't happen. So many people that live in Las Vegas and live in Nevada are coming out and saying, yeah, no, that never happened. None of that <laughs> ever happened in the area, because we would have been informed. So yeah, please address the FBI, FBI calling you situation and at least just come clean. It'd be so much better for you to just come clean and say that you were lying as opposed to just kind of trying to keep going with it. Because the more you go with it, the more you're going to basically be digging yourself into this hole. It's tempting to dodge the subject, but ultimately it's the best thing for you to come straight clean now. And sorry if I seem like a little bit like a bitch here. I'm just, I have a lot of experience with liars. If you can see at my old videos, I have so much experience with compulsive liars. It just kind of like hits home 
when I see people doing it in public. The Depop situation. Um, apparently you've been selling your clothes on Depop, but nobody's been getting their stuff. They've been paying you, but they've been receiving nothing. Please address this and why it's been happening, and especially since I think you had an interview with someone, you were on you now with someone, um, and they asked you about it, and you basically said people are so pissed at that. You basically like, why are people so mad about that? You didn't address it. You didn't address the fact that people were paying you and they weren't getting anything. Like, they weren't getting their items. They weren't getting the items that they paid for. And you know, and that's that's a terrible issue. That's a thing that you need to talk about. It, it need to talk about, you need to explain, and you need to resolve it because people are still hanging in the air. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And they gave you, you know, their hard-earned money. You have a lot of money. Obviously, these people don't, you know? It's like they deserve the stuff that they bought, but they haven't received it yet. Speaking of money, the next thing we'd like to address is you stated, I think in your videos, Spirit Airline, um, you grew up poor. That is pretty much bullshit. Like, fucking, the drama savage already did a video on this. He basically said, I think, she was wearing a bunch of bracelets and they were like $6,300 each, I think. To be completely honest, I think those videos are fake. But the more I looked into the comments, the more I realized that growing up poor was pretty much bullshit. In one of her videos, she bragged about, like, wearing juicy couture tracksuits every day. Those are fucking expensive. You can't just buy those if you're growing up poor, you know, or learning the value of a dollar. It's like, it doesn't work that way. As well as the fact that your first video, you were like, I think 14, and you talked about your hairdresser from hell, who basically bleached your roots and fucked up, and you paid them like 200 upwards dollars to do this. Or at least not paid them, but you were gonna pay them upwards 200 dollars to do this, you know. No poor family would spend 200 dollars to get their roots done up, if that makes any sense. Or if you said you're poor and you truly believe it, then I think you have a very distorted perception of what a poor family is actually like in America. Didn't you also make a story time about your parents taking you to a luxury hotel suite and buying you a bunch of less shit for your birthday? Again, hotel suite in Vegas does not seem like a very poor person family thing to do. You know, it's like, it, it just doesn't add up. A lot of your stories just don't add up and we'd really appreciate it if you address the lies that you said. And then one of the biggest things that I've seen people like talking about so much is the assistant drama. She even made a video about herself. I mean, you said you now that you've like had a lot of receipts and you've shown so many receipts and that like all hers are bullshit, but I've never seen any receipts. I'm pretty sure a lot of your fan base actually hasn't seen any of your receipts. I think you just kind of tend to say that even though it never happened because you want people to believe that it did. Which I, I get, if you lie, you want people to believe it. It makes sense for you to say like you had receipts and you showed receipts even though you didn't. So if you actually do have the receipts, make a video, show the receipts, and please make them legitimate because they, if you lie and you make fake receipts, people, your fan base is gonna find out. Your fan base is gonna be fucking sleuth ass bitches as you like to say. And they're gonna find out if it's fake because they're watching every move you make now and they know every lie that you say and things like that. So if you lie about anything, they're gonna catch on to it really fast. And it's just gonna dig you into a much deeper hole, so you should just kind of avoid lying, show the real receipts if you have any, apologize for basically fucking giving her a terrible name before she made that video against you, say what you lied about, be completely honest about what you lied about, and just kind of resolve it. Resolve it with her and, <laughs> you know, respond. Respond, apologize, resolve it, come, come clean about all the lies and show the receipts if you actually have any because we really don't think you do. The next one is exaggerating the things in your stalker story. Now this is a sensitive topic for you, I know. So I'm gonna try and be like really like like nice about it if I can say. I, I know I shouldn't be but I'm, I'm gonna try and be really nice. Mainly this is about the email that you got and you said that when you were on the plane you spent hundreds of dollars signing up for all these plagiarism websites to try and see if the story was fake and if it was like plagiarized from somewhere and someone just sent it to you because they were like trying to scare you or something and you did admit that it was sent to you by someone who wasn't your stalker but at the same time you said you spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars signing up for all these plagiarism websites and trying to see if it was plagiarized but you couldn't find anything you can search one sentence of what you said into google and find the entire story in one google search so first of all i feel like you would have tried that first and if for some reason you didn't try googling it, um, which I really doubt, <laughs> and you did use a bunch of plagiarism websites, if you could find the story by using one sentence, a plagiarism website could find it like that, you know? So, um, I- <laughs> why the fuck do you say you signed up for all these plagiarism websites when you could have searched it in Google, or they could have found it on Google, the plagiarism websites would have been able to find it like that, you know? It's like, it doesn't add up, and it makes no sense. As well as that, there was a portion of it, you showed the phone to, like, show the email, you paused it and read it, it basically said the, it said blue eyes. When you read it out loud, you said blue green eyes. Blue eyes, blue green eyes. So how come when you read it, 
you said blue green, but the email itself said blue. The email on your phone, the email that you were reading aloud, you were reading aloud what red is blue, but you said it is blue green. Why did you say blue green when the screen said blue? And yeah, there are screenshots to prove that. You can look in her video if you want, it's right there. And why did you also say marble man-made sculpture when it read as marble sculpture? And then not only did you say marble man-made sculpture, but you addressed it as marble man-made sculpture and you like touched upon it that he said man-made as to say, hey, you got no surgery. Why did you lie about that? Does that make it, it just, it doesn't add up. None of this adds up and we really want you to address it so you can clear your name basically. A really quick thing that you haven't addressed with the N-word drama as well, so this is kind of recent. Um, you say that, you at one point, I think on you now, said that it doesn't matter the context you say the N-word in, it's still racist. And that if you say the N-word, you're racist. When in a you now broadcast after that, your friend said the N-word. I think she was referring to Idubs, and so she said like the N-word faggot. And so you like looked at them when they said it, you know, and you were smiling. You didn't call them racist. You didn't yell at them. You didn't get triggered when they said the N-word. And it, it's it's right up on YouTube. It's right up on you now. Anybody can find it. So how come you didn't freak the fuck out when they said it, but you talked about having this active belief that anybody who says it is racist, and that Idubs said it, and he was racist. Does that make any sense? I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling, but yeah, that makes no sense. So please address that. Also, something I found on Twitter... You had a story about drug paraphernalia and getting arrested for that, where, how come, if you go on Twitter, I'll put, like, the guy's Twitter name here, but the stoner guy from the story has a Twitter, and you can go back in his tweets, I think, to November 30th, it takes a lot of scrolling, believe me, but November 30th on his account, um, he, I think, was watching the video, he was the stoner kid in the story, he was watching a video, and he was basically, like, live tweeting it as he was watching it and saying 90% of what you said was bullshit. And then if you look at like the tweets, like in the period that he was watching, pretty much like you can see him replying to friends and like friends of yours and friends of his and stuff. And they're all replying to him and saying, yeah, that was all bullshit. I don't know why she just didn't tell the real story. Does that make any sense? Even your friends that were involved in one of your story times came out and said the story was like pretty much 90% fake and 90% bullshit. Yeah, um, I feel like it's, I, I get if you'd exaggerate it for comedy, but at least say that you're exaggerating it and don't just exaggerate it and expect us to believe it because we're gonna sleuth around and we're gonna find it. And another thing is when Freely made a video of uh, responding to you and so you responded back and you said, plus size model trend is disgusting. And then I think you tried to provide like a picture of like the screenshot or something of as to why it was, even though, cause you were very adamant on the fact that she changed the title apparently and she changed it to like unhealthy and dangerous when you said disgusting. But when Freely made her response video, she used the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive, to show that it had always been plus size metal trend is unhealthy and dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, explain that. Explain how she uses an archive and you only have like a single screenshot. And so yeah, I think that covers my entire list. Um, sorry if it was a little bit long and rambly, I just wanted to make this video because I really want her to address these things, especially the assistant because poor Alyssa is just like waiting there. I know nobody's probably going to see this, but I really hope somebody does and I really hope we send it to her and I really hope she sees it and I really hope she just kind of addresses it because it really helped clear her name. And Tana, if you are watching this, please don't lie about anything else because the thing is, your audience knows when you lie now and so whenever you say anything they're gonna do as much as they can to search and as much as they can to try and find out if what you said is like true if you're lying they're gonna find it so yeah you're probably not gonna see this but if you do please watch please respond or not just respond but like address the things that i talked about you know you don't have to respond to this but yeah so i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope tana sees this video and i think that's all i have to say
Sorry if I was being a bitch again. I have experience with liars and it pisses me off. So I'll just, I'll see you next video. What's well, in signing off.